Hello, and welcome to an intro to Anthro with two humans. I'm human number one, John McCrae. And I'm human number two, John Lear. And this is the podcast where we reassess what it means to be human. And the title of today's episode is A Furious Drive on the Old My Five, A Handy History of Masturbation. <laughs> so, John, before we get started, <laughs> I need to... We were just uh, talking before the rec- record that sometimes I read the stuff, most of the time I read the stuff you give me, but sometimes I don't. Yeah, it's always yeah. a joy when I don't. I, <laughs> your subtitles... <laughs> I leave it up to you. You know what I mean? Yes. I send it over yes. to you, the outline, and just yes. let you let you decide. You know? No, we need the outline for our records, our personal right. records, for, uh, <laughs> regardless right. of whether I read it or not. It's got to go into the on the drive. Right. So I, I have <laughs> to say, first of all, I don't know if I'm the first person ever to say, taking a drive on the old My5. <laughs> I have <laughs> never heard that, but. Right, right. That's fantastic. And as you know, uh, if if someone else has already used it, I apologize to you. It was truly, it was one of those things where, and I'll go through my thought process here. For, well, I think we can trying follow. To come up with, oh, I see. Uh, no, yeah, I was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> but you see how, I, one thing, we, uh, we like to keep things fresh here on this oh, podcast. Oh boy, do we. Do we, we like, ever. We don't like to recycle any ideas or any. Nope. Any, <laughs> any topics or terms. Mm. And, and I think we've previously said that we're trying to get a term from this podcast into the general lexicon, into yes. the general, yes. general society. That's one of our goals. Terms. We also want right. to be a footnote in a scientific journal. Right. Uh, there's a few other things we've we've wanted to do. We want to go- We want uh, to be quoted in a paper somewhere. Yeah, cited. <laughs> we want to be cited. <laughs> <laughs> and send a copy of that. Send a copy of that paper to us. Um, and I think you had thrown out earlier the term VLOP. You had said in an earlier episode, VLOP. Yes, that's right. The VLOP. I forgot what I wanted it to be. What was that? What was that? Uh, what, I, what I was describing? We'll have to go back. What would, if you don't know, go back. Listen, yeah. for those of you who are coming in, there's nothing wrong with going back at the beginning of the class and start right, right, right at the top. Right. If you've got mono and you miss the first half of the semester, (laughs) then you just go back. This day and age, we record stuff. So you just go right back. Yeah. And pretty soon, this will be the way all college courses are. (laughs) (laughs) A a professor will just record it all as if it's not hard enough to become a professor and make a living. (laughs) They'll just record a bunch of episodes, a bunch of lectures, and they will always use those same lectures. Well, that's actually happening. It's called, uh, you know, Apple U or whatever it is, uh, iTunes right. U, where you can get. Right. I took a I took a uh, physics course from Berkeley for free. Just listen <laughs> to the guy. <laughs> you uh, you put that on your resume now, like. Hey, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I haven't gotten full credit yet, but I I oh, took boy. it. Oh, it's hard. It, it's hard being it's a, a professor. Yeah. It's hard being anything. It's all over. The robots will yeah. just kill us all soon. Uh, but anyway, on a lighter note, that secondly, I noticed as I was putting this together that a lot of the slang terms for masturbation uh, usually involved abusing an animal. <laughs> so, what? Like, spanking oh, the monkey. Your chicken. Choke yes. your chicken. Yes. Uh, I did come across one called bashing the bishop, which uh, <laughs> again, must have come across. <laughs> Must have come out during the refer. I don't know Reformation or something, but or the chess piece. It looks very phallic. Maybe it's about right. bashing. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. bashing it. Um, so I thought, you know, trying to give more agency to us as humans. <laughs> I was trying to think of, uh, well, what about if it was instead of like abusing an animal, it was like taking a drive, like taking yes. the car out of the garage, mm-hmm. um, going for In a spin case- up the coast. Yeah, in my case, it's just once the car's out of the garage, it trips over. You know, <laughs> <laughs> right down to the garage. The, you the may driveway go, the you may go down the coast, but I barely get off the uh, driveway. <laughs> well, I started thinking about then, you know, like uh, the I five in California, like you're going up to Big Sur, or mm. you know, you're going up oh, to Monterey. Okay, here's where I went. When you said my five, I thought M I five, M the M one five in uh, <laughs> oh, no. in England. <laughs> That's even better. That's even yeah. better. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, but I was thinking the I-5 and then the My-5, of course, the five fingers. 
And yep. then uh, and then maybe driving, maybe think about the movies Fast and the Furious, <laughs> mm. which, which is also probably more applicable to masturbation than yeah, I was going to say. The car yeah. racing. The most masturbatory um, uh, <laughs> set of films on the planet. Right, right. So then uh, we came up with, with the new term, uh, A Furious Drive on the old My 5. That's so that's fantastic. how we got there. We're going to have a t-shirt of that for those of you who are interested. <laughs> yeah, this is your favorite episode. <laughs> uh, you can, uh, uh, but I, I think it, you know, kind of gives once more, gives us a little more agency. It's kind of like piloting mm. a ship. <laughs> you know, oh, like we're that's driving nice. it, you know, it's yeah. not like abusing anybody. It's, it's a pleasant experience. Yes. It's good. It's more. relaxing. It's like a, a, a massage. Uh, right. Yeah. Well, well, is, right. <laughs> <laughs> Watch out. That does Sometimes it is a massage. Uh, I know. So, I know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and just so uh, everyone doesn't think that this topic is a complete prurient uh, attempt to boost our, our listenership, mm-hmm. uh, which you know, every few episodes, as you know, we do a, a topic about sexuality, about human sexuality, <laughs> just to see yes. if people are still listening. Yeah. And I've been looking at the stats on that. And it's true. Sex sells. Sex sells. <laughs> yeah. But this, uh, I, a few weeks ago. I, I, I have a big, go ahead. I have big hopes on this one. Big hopes for our download oh, numbers. Let's hope. I. You know what? It may be a little too eggheaded. This thing, I may, I may have made it a little. No, too it's just the title. Now. Once we got them, and then, then it doesn't matter if they yeah. listen all the way. <laughs> uh, but a few weeks ago, there was a paper published in the Proceedings of the Royal Society of Biology in England. Wow! And the title of the paper was "Quote: The Evolution of Masturbation is Associated with Post Copulatory Selection and Pathogen Avoidance." In primates. Unquote. Whoa. God, <laughs> so, this is going to be a good episode. You're coming off with that? That's your lead yeah. off? Man. Yeah. That's what I'm... Right now, everybody's turned off. They're like, I don't care if it's about no. masturbation. That's it. Not me. I'm fascinated. <laughs> I want to hear and, about this. So in the paper, the researchers, uh, Matilda Brendel, Harry Ferguson Gow, <laughs> Joseph Williamson... <Harry. laughs> or Henry Ferguson Gow, I guess I should say. Okay. All right. <laughs> Joseph Williamson, Ruth Thompson, and Volker Summer were looking at a few things. And the first thing we need to say is that they defined masturbation as the self-stimulation of the anogenital or breast region carried out with an individual's own body parts or external tools. External tools? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Yeah. Okay. So like if you get one of those uh, electric pumps, that's masturbation? Right. Huh, right. I guess that so. Was, yeah. They were just trying. They were looking at the animal king. I think they were thinking more about like a stick or something. Oh, <laughs> but, right. But if you want a to, stick, Jesus. Yeah. Oh God. And and basically, if you consider masturbation to be autoeroticism or self stimulation, mm-hmm. then masturbation is found throughout the animal world and not just in monkeys or apes or or even really? humans. Right. Really. If and you're the about right to tell me a grasshopper jacks <laughs> off. I'm going to be shocked. Uh, Claire Moskowitz uh, notes that while humans usually masturbate to orgasm, most animals just masturbate because it feels good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I that that makes sense to me. It's comforting, right? right. Okay. And some of the examples she gives are dogs, for example, yep. dolphins, dolphins. Dolphins, yeah, even dolphins. How do you wrap a flipper around. I mean, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah, just, Dolph- I already yeah. thought dolphins are amazing, and now it's even right. higher. Go find a sponge somewhere mm-hmm. <laughs> on the reef and <laughs> uh, moose. Get that piece will- of coral out of my blowhole. <laughs> moose will uh, rub their antlers on trees for but- because it feels good. Well, that's not genitals, is it? Well, it's kind of like they're you know, stimulating themselves. Wow. Uh, male horses will rub their penises on their stomachs. Oh, and female see, horses will rub against posts, for oh, example. Yeah. I've seen like that in posts. Tijuana many, many times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, birds, uh, even birds will do Males will bend their tails under an object, for example, for to stimulate hmm. themselves. Hmm. Uh, 
walruses are also known to use their flippers, and also walruses will uh, use self fellatio. Believe it or not. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. No now it gets real. Do anything. Every picture you see of a walrus, it's he's just laying there, <laughs> just happy, just completely yep, happy. Just, yep. um, and even turtles, like they'll talk about, uh, male turtles will rub against a rock, uh, stick out their penises, and squeak with pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> squeak! Wow, yeah. a turtle Turtles squeak. I'd squeak. like to hear that. Something to Google. Uh, and a study in 2010 in Florida observed that ground squirrels uh, masturbating to ejaculation and even porcupines will rub against sticks and also elephants will also rub against rocks for pleasure. Aww. So it's, yeah. yeah. So it's not just us. Not just, not just us. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. It sounds, it sounds like you're diluting the shame out of masturbation today. <laughs> this is good work. I, I think I'm, hey, I'm I think just reading the facts. I'm yeah. just reading the facts. That, you know what right. I mean? Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's doing some some uh, good work for mankind. Well, this uh, this this podcast. Let's well, all you just, just kind of lay back and enjoy a little. You know, put it in perspective. Yeah. All animals. Put it in perspective. Good. Right. Yeah. Uh, but what Brindle and and the team wanted to find out was uh, when did masturbation first appear in primates? Mm. Meaning, when did primates first start doing it? Okay. And second, secondly, they wanted to see why animals, uh, and particularly primates, masturbate. Well, I can answer that. <laughs> I think it's pretty Brendel obvious. should have just given me a call. <laughs> just DM me, man. I'll let you know. Right, right. I think it's pretty, it feels good. That's like yeah. the simple line. Yeah. yeah. Takes a little edge off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But from a strictly evolutionary standpoint, if you think about it, masturbation presents a problem because uh, at first glance, it doesn't appear to be contributing anything to the survival of an animal species. Right. For example. If anything, it makes them less interested post-coital, post-masturbation. Right. And right. so they might be, it seems to me, they might be less interested in sex if they're masturbating all the time. Right. That's what you would think. And the other thing, since they do it alone, they're not passing on any of those advantageous traits to offspring. Okay. For example. Got it. And, uh, and what Brindle and the researchers say is that masturbation incurs costs in terms of time, attention, and energy. Hmm. So. Okay. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would. I would almost say for me, there's you know, a lot of energy and attention, not so much a cost in, in time. <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. My, as yeah, I said, yeah. my car just gets out of the driveway onto the driveway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so to answer the first question, which was when did masturbation first occur in primates? Brendel and the other researchers assembled all the data they could on primates who masturbate either in the wild or in captivity. Okay. And they then tried to trace back this behavior to the common ancestor of all these masturbating primates. Hmm. And what they found was that primates have been masturbating for about 40 million years. <laughs> yes. yes, we have. <laughs> and that's when they looked at all the different types of monkeys, all the different types of apes that masturbate, take them all back to the common ancestor. And that was 40 million years ago. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> in other words, I mean, it's masturbation didn't just start with Cinemax in the 1980s. <laughs> no, it was one hominid somewhere, some one one primate somewhere who went like, "Ooh, yeah, and then figured that was it out." It. And here figured we all are. <laughs> Next Passed thing you on. know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next thing you know, your mom's opening up your bedroom door, right? And catching right. you in the act. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then, you know, we talked about, our, well, the obvious reason people do it is it feels good. But what right. Brindle and the researchers thought was, well, maybe that idea of feeling good uh, may have been a byproduct of what <laughs> what masturbation was actually there for. Interesting. Interesting. So right. we think we do it because we feel good, but there's actually an evolutionary or a sort of survival uh, thing that, that it's really about. Right. Right. Oh. That's what they're, they were proposing because I don't know, you know, just to say it feels good seems like a pretty simplistic answer. Yes. <laughs> it's kind of hard well, to justify I can your. Think of, 
<laughs> I can think of another one. What about it makes you sleepy? Helps you sleep. Right. For, right. At least for men. I don't know if it does for women. I don't know. I don't know. Somebody should should let us know about that. Mm-hmm. Um, but they thought that in animal mating, including in primates, uh, and including our human ancestor ancestors, there's something called sperm competition. Oh boy. And you know, <laughs> yeah. Yes, there is. <laughs> yeah. As if the world's not competitive enough. You know what I mean? <laughs> now it's like even sperm competition. Even Jesus. sperm are trying to compete. Talk about the rat race. Yeah, yeah. It'll probably be like like a reality show now. <laughs> Producers <laughs> listening to this after the uh, <laughs> after the strike, there'll be like a uh, sperm competition reality show where you. <laughs> I'm I'm sure it's being pitched. <laughs> uh, but sperm competition usually happens in animal societies where one female mates with many males. So if you think uh-huh. about it, right? A okay. Chimp group. There'll be like lots of like lots of females and males, but usually. It will be lots of males trying to mate with one female. Okay. And Makes in their sense. book, Hu- Human Sperm Competition, Robin Baker and Mark Bell say that- They named the book <laughs> Human Sperm Competition? Yeah. Jeez, it was very that expensive. That flew off the, flew off the <laughs> shelves. My God. Yeah. I, good, I had to get it once I saw it. Yeah, of course. Uh, it'd be a good name for a band, I think. <laughs> Human Sperm Competition? <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. I like it. I like it. Um, But in human sperm competition, Robin Baker and Mark Bella say that, quote, sperm competition is the competition between different males for the prize of the fertilization of the egg produced by a single single female. So their idea is that individual males in the animal kingdom are trying to Imp- like fertilize that egg to pass on their genes. Mm-hmm. They then say that in internal fertilizers, such as humans, su- such competition naturally takes place within the reproductive tract of a single female. Okay. So yeah. the, the competition is take like inside the, you know, fallopian tubes and the uterus, uh, inside, once the female is fertilized, then they're all competing. The sperm. Got it. Got it. And they say that the risk of sperm competition is thought to have influenced many aspects of sexuality, uh, not only concerning sperm and the ejaculate, but innumerable other aspects of male and female anatomy and physiology. Hmm. And then they say that sperm competition could be argued to promote not only highly competitive ejaculates, but mm-hmm. also to shape anatomical devices such as the penis and vagina and to generate a whole array of copulatory behavior. Okay, so the 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 your the sperm that that succeeds is passing on uh right. the, the 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 DNA of the winner and that right. that tends over time to uh guide the species in a certain direction. Right. Exactly. And what they're saying is that it was sperm competition, which led evolutionarily to uh, like the shape of our penises or the construction of the vagina to try to to aid in the sperm competition. Wow. Help a winner in the sperm competition. Really? So like the shape of the penis might help uh, help the sperm. Interesting. Right. Wow. And so okay. they give another example. They they talk about mate guarding, which is one way that males try to prevent other males from having access to, to a particular female. Mm-hmm. And so that's where like in certain, again, like chimp or like monkey uh, societies, like certain males will, you know, try, try to chase away all the other males that are trying to mate with a certain female. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. And that's like, do you this. know, and you know, that happened. I can see remnants of that certainly in our society. <laughs> yeah, you exactly. know, you cock block your friend because you know, right? There's a reason why that upsets you. Saying, no, my sperm competition, 
Yeah. Jesus, we're just miserable little machines, aren't we? Yeah. We're just it's still like, it's so dumb. It's still left over, you know, like oh, in the bar where God. some guy's trying to chase a bunch of people away from their girlfriend oh. or whatever, you know. So that's jealousy, maybe. That's that's where jealousy comes from to sort of uh that's the you know, that pulls the trigger, right? That's yeah, the maybe. emotional maybe uh motivation to yeah. what you're re- when you're not really jealous. Your brain's telling you that you're jealous so that you keep anybody else from winning the sperm competition. Yeah, maybe it goes back. Maybe, Jesus. you know, I didn't, never even thought about that, that, I, you know, jealousy, you always think of being like emotional, but maybe it's like going back to like very, you know, evolutionary biology mm-hmm. or something. I'm trying to think. Uh, and, you know, the other thing that Baker and Bellis do is they go into a really detailed analysis of human sperm. Uh, so, oh for boy. example, like we all, we all Thank know. Thank God I human... wasn't a, an intern on that one. You know? Hey, John, yeah. I know, I oh, know. Give, give me, me a, a second. Cup. I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, <just> give me... <laughs> Let me clear my mind. Oh, you know, I'm exhausted. Like... <laughs> no, the porn won't work. <laughs> I got it. Just uh, give me a second. Let me close my eyes here for a minute. <laughs> I'll take my afternoon break now just to kind of clear my mind. Uh, yes, I uh, know where the beakers are. Yes. <laughs> so Baker and Bellis go into a really detailed analysis of human sperm, like I said. And for example, we know that human sperm consists of two basic parts, a head and a tail. And a tail. Okay. Yes. So the head contains the paternal chromosomes. Mm-hmm. And and the tail is the propulsion element. <laughs> it, so it just gets you there. Right. It's like the rocket booster. You know, right, it gets exactly. you and then it's not really needed. What happens? It's like to an the artillery tail? it's like an artillery shell. Like one part yeah. is the is the you know, the the ammunition or the explosive yeah. and the other part is the propulsion that gets delivers uh-huh. the payload. What happens to the tail it, once it fertilizes an egg, do you know? God, just get in know. there. It just gets absorbed. Everything gets absorbed yeah. and reused. It's pretty yeah. amazing. The body's pretty amazing. Be- <laughs> uh, but Baker and El- Bellis noted that when a human male ejaculates, there is approximately 350 million sperm in each ejaculation. My God. I mean, I knew <laughs> that. I've heard that before. But just every time I hear it, I'm like, my God, what a waste. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So many of those guys have gone into socks and Kleenexes. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, trillions, trillions, trillions in some cases. Oh, they work uh, so hard and then they're just put on a right. Kleenex. Right. It, it, they say that that number is enough that one one ejaculation should be able to fertilize every woman in America if it was successful. Yeah, believe me, I have friends. I know a guy too. <laughs> uh, wow, God. Yeah. Talk about overkill, so, you know? Right. Well, we'll My get to God. that. So why the huge number of sperm? That's what yeah. everybody seems to ask. And there was a researcher named Jeffrey Parker who is known as the father of sperm competition. Oh boy. <laughs> what a <laughs> moniker. We're going to put yeah. that on his gravestone. Oh, the father I don't know of if sperm you, competition. I Jesus. don't know if you even want to put that on your resume. You know no. what I mean? It, uh-uh. Like people see that and it's like, yeah, hey, it's lawsuit, lawsuit. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Might be good on your dating <laughs> profile, though. <laughs> uh, and what Parker said, he did a lot of research back in the 70s all the way through the 90s when he retired. But what Parker said was that sperm competition was a lottery. And he said the more sperm a male produces, the more chances he will have of outcompeting sperm from other males. But I don't understand that. Oh, because, because there's not m- multiple... Uh, gatherings of sperm from different men inside a a woman, or is that if we're going all the way back, is that possible? Everybody, if we just go fucking everybody, if we I go see. all the way back, that's what we're saying. Like, in so a, everybody's just screwing, and and whatever the best sperm is. So this, no right. wonder uh, the father of uh, sperm competition was from the seventies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, like he, tea parties and orgies, and everybody was everywhere. Right. Right. Before he's talking AIDS, about pre-AIDS. like every 
everybody's having sex, like in their, like in our ancient ancestors or in primates, everyone was having sex and you're just trying to make certain that your own personal sperm is the one that fertilizes the egg. God, what it must've been like, Jesus. <laughs> you know, okay, he it's also amazing. Partner- they did anything. It's amazing. Yeah. They went and gathered berries or anything. It's amazing. <laughs> we're here. Just sperm competition kind of takes on a whole, it, yeah. it affects everything at that point. Everything. Right? People just screw until they die <laughs> from starvation or whatever. So Parker thought that evolution also favored smaller sperm as opposed to larger sperm. Hmm. So he, he thought that if you produce large numbers of tiny sperm, you would have a better chance of fertilizing an egg than, than a male who produced fewer but larger sperm. So oh, again, you're trying to increase your chances. Yes. You know what I mean? I like his lottery explanation. It's like, it's right. the ultimate game of bing- bingo. The more, right. uh, <laughs> more, the more flyers you put out there, <laughs> more flyers yep. you put on windshields. Yes. Uh, the more, they say it's the more 5%. chances. Yeah. You just put, yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. Overkill is um, good. Right. Right. And that's kind of the reason why his theory was that's why we produce so many sperm. So mm. there and, was a band uh, in the nineties, eighties and nineties called urge overkill. Do you ever remember? Yeah. Those guys? Yeah. I now yeah. I, their name is making more sense now. Was that from yeah. that? Or I didn't I know. Don't know. It was. I never understood, yeah. but now I'm thinking maybe, uh, you know, it's sperm competition. Yeah, they were, <laughs> they were all, maybe they were biologists. I don't know. We should <laughs> look into that. I met one of them. One of them actually went to Northwestern. And I came yeah. over to my girlfriend's house and was just wasted in this total nightmare. I won't name <laughs> names, but he broke her coffee table. I remember that. Oh, God. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people had stories about those guys around. Probably. Chicago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but other researchers uh, tend to think that larger sperm, uh, you know, are faster and stronger swimmers. And therefore, a larger sperm could be more successful than a smaller sperm. Okay. So there's debate as about which which is the better sperm, right? A bunch of li- is it death by a thousand cuts or one big knife stab? Which <laughs> which is better? Just a strong <laughs> swimmer. I just like yeah. You know, like, yeah. Just stay at it. Just keep on go- You know, just hang in there. Yeah. And so Baker and Bellis came up with the idea of the kamikaze sperm hypothesis. Oh, boy. And what the kamikaze sperm hypothesis says is that among these 350 million sperm, Mm -hmm. there are different sperm that do different things. What? Wait a minute. Right. So it's not all sperm, according to Baker and Bellis, it's not all sperm trying to get to the egg. They say that, you know, they kind of divide the work up a little bit. Oh, so it's like... (laughs) It's like uh, it's like the Tour de France where some of the bike riders are there for different things <laughs> to yeah, get the lead right. bike rider to win. Right, exactly. <laughs> like you share analogy. the wind for him, you know, or you crash into the other guy and stop him from going. Right. Or, yeah, you, you're the That's... one who carries the inner tubes or whatever the <laughs> fuck they do. <laughs> That's the kamikaze sperm hypothesis. God. If it so, wasn't miserable enough to be meaningless, just a sperm cell, that's your existence. Yeah. You're not even a sperm cell that's going to get there. Yeah, you're wow. one of the, yeah. I can you're relate to the, those guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Baker and Bellis, they say that there are very few what they called egg getters. Okay, those are the really <laughs> fast, strongest swimmers. Oh, I know those guys. Yeah. Those egg getters. And like you were saying in the Tour de France, they said that the majority of the other sperm are there to assist the egg getters. <laughs> That's me. Yeah. I'm an assistant, I'm an assistant <laughs> to the egg getter. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they divide the kamikaze sperm into two types. Okay. These are the assistants. They call right. them blockers and uh-huh. seek and destroyers. Oh, boy. That sounds fun. Yeah. Blockers, so the blockers block other sperm cells? Right. So they take really? up a position on the way to the egg and try to block sperm from other males getting in. Jesus Christ. Yeah. yeah. So they're intense. there to watch watch the door. You know what I mean? It's like, uh-huh. hey, you guys, watch yeah. the door while we, yeah. Oh my God. Just get in the way. Just cock right. block. Cock block the other ones. 
even, do they down, even know who's what? They can How from you, chemically, chemically and hormonally, they can tell like, hey, I need to block that one. You know Jesus, I mean? that's amazing. This is amazing. Yeah. Uh, seek and destroyers are actually, they go around and try to destroy any sperm from another male that happened to have made it past the blockers. How do they destroy so, them? They wrap their tail around them or what do they do? <laughs> no, they, yeah, how, they how do you a, destroy? They use an, a, an enzyme. So it's, uh, a, it's a, you know, I don't think it's carry. like mano a mano. You know, right, like, right. They've there, got like, like a actually, grenade that they just, you know, they pull the pin and kill them both. <laughs> On the Take macro level, it's going outside the bar, out behind the bar. <laughs> on the on the internal level, the micro level, it's tail against tail. Wow. Um, wow. But you mentioned the, the Tour de France. You know, I was thinking as I'm reading that this is like Quidditch in yes. Harry Potter. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you're right. Everything's you know, you about have... the snitch. Wait, is right. it the snitch? I don't remember. Right. So you have chasers, beaters. One keeper and one seeker in Quidditch from male comp or kamikaze sperm hypothesis. Uh, you have egg getters, blockers, and seek and destroyer. <laughs> but it's basically Maybe the millennials same idea. will uh, start playing this game out on campuses now. You know how Quidditch has <laughs> yeah, become a yeah. real game. Maybe yeah. uh, they could play, uh, you know, sperm competition. Yeah. Do you have any everybody, desire everybody to play would- Quidditch? No, but I would play sperm competition. I'd love to wrap like a white, uh, wear a white hat with a long tail on it, and yeah, you know, yeah. block people. Or that sounds fun. Just have yeah, a I saw it. big old egg on each side of the playing field. <laughs> Just the it's egg like, like a goalie trying to keep yeah. people away. From it. <laughs> they, uh, I've seen that that Quidditch. On campus looks so uncovered. You have to run with that broom between your legs, right? It's stupid. I'm just yeah. gonna say it. It's dumb. Just kick a soccer ball for Christ's sake. <laughs> Can't we all just play? Uh, what do what do we play on campus? Um, frisbee, ultimate frisbee, ultimate and hacky, frisbee. Sack. hacky sack. Hacky sack. Most of the time, the we hacky? just took mushrooms and sat down under a tree or something. I think the. Were you, I think these kids were you need into to hacky? relax. Did you play hacky? Hell no. Or did you? <laughs> no, I was I was on drugs the whole time. I couldn't see anything. You know. Yeah, I know. Did you play hacky? No, no. But did I, you play I, the sack? I, I, did, I didn't play the sack, but God, people would play that for hours. hours. I know. You'd, I know. And it always you, looked dumb. And it was a lot of picking up the sack. They were yeah. always bending over to pick up the sack. Yeah. I, I was, you know, you'd see them like when you went into class, you'd be yeah. on campus all day, and then you come out and see the same people just like still playing hacky side uh-huh. in the it's same true. place. Um, so what does masturbation have to do with the sperm competition theory? Mm-hmm. And what Brindle and the others came up with, they came up with a few explanations. And the first one was called the post copulatory selection hypothesis. Oh, boy. And this was actually made up of two different hypotheses, uh, hypotheses, the sexual arousal hypothesis and the sperm quality hypothesis. Hmm. Okay. So you, so, you operate the machine enough and the sperm get better? You, you, you somehow, <laughs> it's like taking them to the gym or something? <laughs> well, that's one way to look at it, John. But let's <laughs> I'll try to explain how they explained it. Okay, thank you. So uh, so what they said in the sexual arousal hypothesis is that in primates where multiple males compete to mate with one female, mm-hmm. masturbating before mating may help lower ranking males ejaculate faster when they do get the chance to mate with that one female. <laughs> so, but why is faster better? Because they're, remember, if, if you have a bunch of males trying to mate with one female, Mm-hmm. And you have lower rank. Usually the higher ranking males will have the opportunity whenever they want. Uh, if I you're see. a lower ranking male. You sneak in just, there. <laughs> yeah, when, wow. when, when the higher ranking male goes off to the bathroom, you just uh-huh. want to run in there and do what you can as quickly as, quickly as, possible. as possible. Right. Well, then I'm definitely a lower ranking male. <laughs> so, <laughs> There's so, no question. So the hypothesis uh for the sexual arousal hypothesis says that like, if you're the lower ranking male, then you just stay constantly aroused 
you're using masturbation to stay constantly aroused so that so when that, you do see like, oh my God, he's gone. I can go in there and just take care like of it. It's like a fluffer. You're a fluffer. You're constantly <laughs> fluffed, right? On porn yeah. sets, they would have fluffers right. to keep the erection. So there's they're just constantly fluffing. Okay, right. okay, there he goes. Yeah, yeah. You can't, you can't be flaccid. You got to be ready to go. Right. Jesus Christ. You got to take your bro- chance. God, the animal kingdom is brutal. It's just, oh my God. Right, right. <sighs> um, the other part of the post copulatory selection hypothesis is the sperm quality hypothesis. Okay. I and, didn't hear about this. And this is what you were kind of talking about, but in a different way. <laughs> <laughs> That's very kind of you. Yeah, yeah. We both know what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's no bad. There's no bad comments here. There's no wrong. <laughs> Thank you, Professor. Uh, but what Brindle and the others found was that uh, masturbating and ejaculating before mating improves sperm quality by getting rid of the old sperm, hmm. because like the longer sperm stays around, the slower it gets. And it starts to die off and, and it's not as powerful as it, was, as it was. Really? Yeah. So if you want to get somebody pregnant, if you want to get a woman pregnant, you should jack off a bunch to get <laughs> your fresh best guys ready to go. Right. Right. Man. You're always play in football terms, you're always playing your number ones. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> you're not, you, so you have to you have to uh that's the idea is that the masturbation was like you're rotating the stock. And you've always mm. got the strongest ones. Ready it's like a hockey working. game where you bring in the fresh line. Right. You bring in a fresh right. line. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Damn. And, you know, I know what people are saying. They're probably saying, well, yeah, this is all about male masturbation. What about female masturbation? Mm-hmm. And what what Brindle and the others found is that um, uh, they also say that the sexual arousal hypothesis also apply, applies to female masturbation in that uh, sexual arousal in females f- facilitates mating. Mm. So in which case a female master- masturbating before mating may help uh, facilitate what they call the cryptic female choice. So in other what? words, there's certain things. Uh, Another that good name of a band, cryptic female <laughs> choice. Cryptic female choice. Yeah, it's Not perfect. bad. And we've, we've talked about it before, I think, in, I think it was in our bipedal episode, but like some people, you know, the argument or they have a hypothesis that females had more say in who they mated with mm-hmm. uh, prehistorically than, you know, than what we think. Yes. Yes. And, and so what, what they're saying is that what Brindle says that female arousal increases vaginal pH creating a more hospitable hospitable environment for sperm. Huh. And they also note that vaginal fluid associated with arousal filters out inferior sperm while, fa- while facilitating the transfer of high quality sperm towards the uterus. Wow. That's yeah. incredible. So wow. your your pH, the pH in the in a vagina actually changes during arousal. To make to kind of make it more accessible Hospitable for the yeah. best sperm, right? Jesus exactly. Christ, that's incredible. It, yeah, and so they said, and the reason they're saying, well, maybe by female masturbation, you're actually allows the female primate to kind of decide who they want to have access or better access to them. Oh, I see. If that makes you sense. You ma- masturbate. Uh, because you want it to be easier to have sex with the uh, male that you are most right. uh, attracted to. Right. It makes it easier. Wow. And uh, so the, the other thing they say is that the contractions associated with female orgasm may enhance the passage of sperm through the uterine cavity and the associated secretions of prolactin, which is a hormone uh, may actually help the sperm fertilize the egg in other words it kind of works on the sperm that comes through to help fertilize it that's an important lesson out there yeah for guys yeah you know <laughs> yeah. please yeah. your lady right right yeah <laughs> slow down there soldier <laughs> they uh they also say that during arousal the vaginal ph increases to become more neutral 
which again is more hospitable to sperm, allowing females to differentially favor certain males. But this also makes the female more vulnerable to infections. So there's always a there's a yin to every yeah. yang, isn't there? Yeah. Man, man. Um, Why? The because of thing- the pH, the the the, the pH it makes you what what your pH is it makes you more vulnerable to infection. Well, the pH is the the p if a, I guess a higher pH would be like make it more uh, inhospitable to bacteria, for example. I see. But by lowering that pH, then it, the sperm is, is is more hospitable to the sperm, but it's not as hospitable to, or I mean, it's more hospitable to the sperm, but it's not inhospitable to bacteria. So there's more of a chance of getting infected. Does that make wow. sense? Yes, it does. Wow. Um, the other hypothesis Brindle came up with and her team was the pathogen avoidance hypothesis. So they notice that some primates clean their genitals and urinate after mating. Boy, that's me. Okay. I, yeah. <laughs> right to the yeah, shower. I'm, right to I'm the one shower. of those guys. Well, I need to go to the bathroom for sure. <laughs> Feels like the right thing. And then showering, yeah. yeah, sometimes, you know, but yeah, but definitely pee. I got to pee. But, but that's basically the idea because the pathogen avoidance hypothesis says that uh, masturbating after mating uh, may have evolved as a way of reducing the risk of sexually transmitted infections. Ah, interesting. On both sides, male and female? Uh, usually it's it's males. They've noticed it in primates that with males that do it, it it's the male does it afterwards. Just to kind of clean things out there. Right, right. Huh. So, and then... Uh, Probably, and again, like I say, it's usually just the the pathogen avoidance is for males only. But before we move on to how masturbation has been looked at culturally in humans, Mm. uh, there are a few other points I want to make. In her PhD dissertation in October 2000, Ruth Thompson, which was on Brendel's, she was on Brendel's team. She looked at sperm competition and masturbation in Japanese macaque monkeys. Okay. <laughs> Macaque. <did it. laughs> and Thompson found that the longer ejaculate was stored, the larger its volume and total sperm number became. However, the longer an ejaculate was stored, the lower the sperm swimming velocity and percentage of vital sperm became. Uh, so it's kind of like what we were talking about. The longer the sperm's f- around, the, the slower weaker it, it is. The weaker. Yeah. So you got to find that golden, that perfect... Uh, sweet spot, if you will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Thompson thought that there were two types of sperm strategies in primate societies based on her research of Japanese macaques. <laughs> <laughs> she called, so she, she saw two different types of males in the macaque society. Okay. And one she called the garters, who tended to be older, high-ranking males, that had oh, garter, the chance to make with a G with a G. Yeah, G. Okay. Garters. I thought the garter, I thought you were saying garters like what women put on their legs. No, you know, no, like no a, garters you know, like G U weddings. G U A R D E R S. Garters. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Garters. And they tended to be older, high ranking males that had the chance to mate many times with the same female. Hmm. And the garters usually had a large volume of s- slow moving sperm. Okay. So she mm-hmm. went in and she checked the, the sperm on them. How did and, you do that? I don't want to know. Oh. I don't want to know. I don't want to <laughs> no, know. Let's not find out. Nobody do Google any- that. Yeah. Let's you'll, not. You'll do anything for a PhD. You know, once, once, you get that, <laughs> Jesus. once you get that thesis fever, that dissertation yeah. fever, you'll do anything. Oh my God. Like, just let me do it. Uh, did you the get other the males- Yes. I was up early. I got it. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Oh. So she says uh, the other group of males she called the sneakers. <laughs> That's me. There, this is me. <laughs> this is me. Yeah. And the sneakers were usually younger males of lower ranking uh, or of lower rank who uh, must mate opportunistically. Uh-huh. <laughs> she says. Like the yeah. garters are the husbands off at work and the sneakers right. are the, is the milkman. Right. Comes around has the opportunity, let's do this. Mm -hmm. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. Uh, 
and what she noticed is that the garters usually didn't masturbate before mating. So hmm. the the garters were just always thinking like, hey, this I got this thing under control. There's nothing. Yeah, I whatever I wanted, I got it. Right. But the sneakers, but what she, they, you know, they got to. Oh, this is interesting. <laughs> right. This is so interesting. So, so she found that the sneakers usually did masturbate. And so mm-hmm. it goes back to what we were talking about, where it's like, you got to be ready to go. Yeah. Yeah. And so, again, what she found was that by masturbating before mating, the sneakers actually brought a smaller amount of better quality sperm mm-hmm. and faster swimming sperm to the interaction. They're like snipers, whereas the garters like got shotguns. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. The, the garters are holding off, waiting for, you know, I don't need to worry about it. The sneakers are like, give me the chance. All I'm looking yeah. for, one All shot. All I need is a one minute. Shot. Yeah, one shot. Yeah. Wow. And in the troop of macaques she studied, uh, DNA testing showed that six out of the nine babies were sired by sneakers. <gasps> so then, why are we all sneakers now? Who, are we all sneakers? Did that? Is that uh, who's left? How does, this, how does a sneaker become a garter? I don't know. You just get older, I guess. And I think guess you yeah. Don't need to be a yeah. Sne- you don't need to be a sneaker anymore. But it's amazing, I have some though. Is friends isn't? who are older who are still sneakers. You know what I mean? Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Or they like to think they're still sneakers, you yeah. know? But, yeah. you know, they they haven't embraced their garter. Yeah. You know? yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. You may think that you're a sneaker, but chances are, whether you yeah. know it or not, objectively speaking, you're, you're a garter. Yeah. You point. can wear tattoos or a chain on your <laughs> wallet all you want, but if you're 56, you're a garter. Yeah, you're a garter. Yeah, it's your sperm has slowed way down yeah. to a trickle. <laughs> Watch out for the sneakers. Watch out for the sneakers. <laughs> well, it's their uh, time. My God, let them sneak. Yeah. <laughs> so Thompson, her idea was that uh, masturbation may have evolved to provide an adaptive reproductive adma- advantage by improving the quality of sperm. That's what she came up with. And then over time, it became pleasurable in order to like somehow the those who found pl- found it pleasant that dna got passed on even more because they were more likely to inseminate the, and pass on their dna yeah wow. it was meant to keep you doing it you know from a purely yeah. evolutionary standpoint that's all just we are it. that's all we are yeah we're just machines to make more <laughs> of us it's yeah. just cuz i as you're saying this i'm like extrapolating this to different people I know, you know, Mm. and and how it motivates everything from the kind of car you drive. Right. You know, I'm a garter. I'm driving a, my car, I don't care. (laughs) If it's air conditioned, (laughs) it's got good stereo. Yeah. You got to, everybody has to have a real, you have to get down and have a real heart to heart with yourself. Yeah. Am I a garter or am I a sneaker? Yeah. You know. If you're spending a third of your income leasing a Tesla, it's time to <laughs> take stock yeah. for a second. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let it go. Let it, let go. it go. Let it go. Uh, the other thing in their book, Bonobo, The Forgotten Ape. Oh, uh, boy. F- and we've talked about it, and eventually yes. we'll do an episode just on the bonobos, which are yeah, fascinating. Yeah, bonobos are fascinating because they, yeah. yeah. But Franz DeWall, and I think his name was Franz Lanting. I don't know. Um, oh, both but, of them? De- Franz? I don't Jesus, know. I made the confusion. DeWall and Lanting. They noticed that while all bonobos masturbated, the most regular masturbators were adolescent males and adult females. <laughs> so Interesting. Think, yeah. I think that holds true. Uh, Probably the today. same in humans, I well, think. Well, certainly yeah. with the males. Because I've got some adolescent males running around my house. And let me tell you, <laughs> yeah. it's on fire here. Yeah. Jesus. Uh, so then we ask ourselves, well, if masturbation has been around for 40 million years, how did it start becoming so shameful? Or, or why mm-hmm. did people see it as shameful? You know, that yeah. seems like a long time that we would have had it. Mm-hmm. And uh, the thing is, before the 1700s, masturbation really wasn't thought of as such a bad thing or such a horrible sin. Right. And 
people obviously did it and knew about it, uh, but it wasn't seen as something that would, you know, condemn your soul or anything like that. Right. And on Greek vases, for example, there are depictions of satyrs masturbating. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the gods were supposed to have taught the satyrs how to masturbate, and then the, Who the puts masturbators. That on a vase, though? <laughs> Why on a vase? <laughs> Why do we need yeah. to see it on a vase? I mean, yeah, I'm all you... for it. I don't want it on my vase. Some Satan yeah. jacking off. What would you would you put that like nowadays? What would be the equivalent? It's like you'd put it on your, uh, you know, your screensaver. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking on your like your your thermos or whatever that you use when you when you go out jogging. You know, <laughs> put it on a big flag and put it on the back of your pickup. <laughs> Uh, satyrs were then supposed to have, have taught humans how to masturbate mm, boy <laughs> so, <yeah. laughs> uh, satyrs. Uh, the, the romans actually ex, you know for uh, romans they accepted masturbation but they always kind of looked down on masturbation because if you mm. were like a, a real successful roman male uh, the idea is that you should be able you had a slave that could do it for you or you could go to a brothel to have yeah. someone else do a it. garter. That's a garter. Right. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and the thing is, is like you would be for the Romans, they kind of always made fun of people who they thought were masturbating because it's like, well, he just really isn't a true Roman male. Mm -hmm. You know? Right. A seeker. <clears throat> yeah. And in uh, the book Solitary Sex, a cultural history of masturbation, Thomas Lacour says that between the sixth and twelfth centuries, there wasn't even a specific word for masturbation. Like we, in <laughs> most societies, we hadn't even come up with a term for it yet. What's he doing? Even oh, you know, that thing <laughs> that we all do. Oh, yeah. I see what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Which I don't know. In a, in a sense, oh. it's more accepting at that. Like, <laughs> we're not even going to come up with a term for it. Oh, I just walked by his tent. Guess what he's doing again? <laughs> Our well, eyes met. It was I really was... awkward. <laughs> what was he doing? Uh, you know. You know. You know. You know. <laughs> the thing you were just doing. Oh, by the rock? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in the Bible, there's actually no specific mention of masturbation, mm -hmm. which seems amazing to me. Because sure the Bible does. has so many other different things that it talks yeah. about as far as carnal sins. but That is interesting. Yeah. Uh, and it wasn't until, you know, people tried to lump masturbation in with some of the other things that the Bible talks about. So it, in the 12th century, there was a monk named Peter Damien that classified masturbation as a type of sodomy. Hmm. And it was, it was more just kind of a, a matter of convenience because they couldn't, they couldn't find any other term or any other mention of masturbation in the Bible. I that. see. Yeah. So you're saying the Bible says it's okay to masturbate. That's what I'm, you're, that's your point. Here you're putting <laughs> no, out. I'm saying the Bible doesn't say it's not okay. Oh, okay. To masturbate. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay. Good. There's good. a difference. They've omitted okay, yes. it completely. Yeah. And some people even tried to say like, there's a, a teaching of Jesus where, you know, if thy right hand causes you to sin, cut it off. <laughs> Some people try oh, to associate man. that with master, but that's a stretch. I, yeah. I think and besides, stretch. most people use their left because you need the other one to scroll through your phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so exactly. that's clearly. Yeah. That is ridiculous. The right yeah. hand. I mean, if you're uh, left-handed, it might be. So maybe left-handers yeah. can't masturbate is what the yeah. Bible say. <laughs> uh, eventually the church came back to the story of Onan which we've talked about before in our episode on contraception mm -hmm. and they tried to say well what was bad you know Onan who spilled a seed outside the womb and mm -hmm. therefore masturbation must have also been you know associated with with Onan because it's mm -hmm. not going towards producing offspring look so. he did the best he could and he missed and it got on her tummy. <laughs> That's okay. Everybody just clean, you know, everybody just hit reset. Calm down. Everybody now just calm, calm down. down. It's going to be all right. Uh, and according to Lacour, most ancient doctors uh, didn't really talk about masturbation, but they, they did believe that semen or the seminal fluid 
was the most important fluid in the body. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know about and, that. I and think so spit's pretty important. <laughs> well, these when are just ancient dry mouth. Oh. Yeah. 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 I'd rather so have they spit would... than sperm. Person. <laughs> if you were to say, John, here's a glass of sperm. Here's a glass of spit. I'd take the spit. Yeah. Well, it's a good, you know, everybody <laughs> has a choice on that, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh and so they, they also cautioned against, ancient doctors would caution against having too much sex, for example, because they thought you were diminishing your sperm. And the idea was that you had to conserve that sperm because it was so, so powerful. But, but we now know that's not true. The opposite is right. true. Right. And, and they even, they would talk about like, uh, there were, because it was so powerful, the, the opposite was if it built up too much then you had to do something to relieve that sperm, uh-huh. get that sperm out of your body. Boy, is that true. Yeah. And I so what the that. doctor Galen in the second century said is, it is distinctly clear that moderate men come to intercourse, not on account of pleasure, but because they want to heal their disturbance. <laughs> even, if, even if it were without pleasure. So it's like, okay, I'm having sex. But I'm not having sex because it's pleasurable. <laughs> I'm doing it because it's, my doctor told me I have to do it. That sounds like the kind of theory a man would come up to. It's like, hey, <laughs> I'm not enjoying this. Yeah. I got to do it. And and it kind of, you know, that did come, come down through the 19th century when women were treated for hysteria. Remember when mm-hmm. <laughs> hysteria mm-hmm. was supposed to relieve that, that tension. Mm-hmm. that they were feeling like it wasn't yeah. for pleasure but it was for medicine to give them an orgasm to really like for medical purposes yeah because there were all these devices and things that were used if a woman felt it was it was suffering from hysteria uh, yeah. the doctor would would masturbate her basically right right uh but then in 1712 there was a book uh published called onania or the heinous sin of self-pollution and all its fruit, frightful consequences in both sexes. Oh, who, and it, who put that book out? I, well, it was originally published anonymously, and then they they traced it back to a guy named John Martin, who is a doctor. Mm. And when was and this? I'm sorry. 1712. 1712. God, God damn it, Martin. <laughs> so, You're the he one. Goes, he, goes, he goes crazy on it, because first of all, he's the first one to call masturbation onania which is he's referring it to onan specifically Mm -hmm. and along with creating the medical problem of masturbation he the book also gave rise to an industry that tried to come up with products to help you (laughs) if you you masturbated yeah of course of course and so liqueur says these included things like erection alarms what uh, yeah like an alarm on your body so that when you're sleeping and you get an erection, you'll get an alarm, like a bell will go off. And then what do you do? Well, you wake up and not do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Let me sleep through it. Don't wake me yeah. up. Yeah. They I'm also having sold a nice it. dream about my high school girlfriend. Let me just <laughs> yeah. leave a guy alone. They also sold sleeping mitts so that you couldn't, <laughs> you couldn't do anything, you know? You're... Oh my God. What did they look like? Were they like leather and chained or something? They must've been, I, I they had know. spikes on them or, uh, yeah. oh my God. Jesus and they also Christ. sold devices to kind of hobble girls to keep their legs together. So even females. Oh weren't. my God. Yeah. yeah. Martin. Yeah. And Martin, he acknowledges that both males and females masturbated at the time. Mm-hmm. And what he did is he came up with a, he said there were a lot of physical diseases that were caused by masturbation. Oh, and, and he says, quote, self-pollution causes strangulary, stranguries, which is like painful urination, mm-hmm. preopisms, which is like continuous erections, <laughs> and other disorders of the penis and testes, but especially gonorrheas. More difficult what? to be cured than those contracted from women actually laboring under foul diseases. So, oh. so Martin said you could get you could get gonorrhea, get gonorrhea by jacking off from yourself. Yeah, oh, <laughs> Martin, he missed on so many levels. Yeah, yeah. I'm angry with him, but I'm starting to relate to him too because I'm a total right. idiot. I've been wrong about so many things. This is a very popular book. It, 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 many editions of this book. 
came You're out. You're kidding. Yeah. Jesus. And he says that self-pollution has caused fainting fits and epilepsies, meaning that if mm. you masturbate, you, know, you can have fainting fits and epilepsies. I've had uh, a few faints, it, you know, from doing it, you know, maybe when I, <laughs> I mean, I'm thinking back to my early days. Yeah. And you know. he says in many young men who were strong and lusty before they gave themselves over to this vice, have, they've been worn out by it and by it's robbing the body of its balmy and vital moisture without coughing or spitting, dry and emaciated, sent to their graves. So Jesus. He says, you could die from it. He said so you could th- die from masturbation. This is like, you know, like boxers are told not to uh, spill right. their seed. Right. Like it, it, must, it must all come from this book somehow. Right. That it gets back to like, you're losing that vital fluid, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and as far as masturbation and women, uh, Martin said that women who, if they practice this, uh, it makes them look pale and those who are not of good complexion, swarthy and haggard. So in other <laughs> words, he was just saying, whatever you look like, if you do it, you're gonna, going to look the opposite of it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You uh, do look a little also, pale. Uh, right, right. McCray, and he also he said it, it caused hysteric fits and sometimes by draining away all of the radical moisture, uh, it, it would also produce barrenness by venereal indifferency and at length the total ineptitude to the act of generation itself. Jesus <laughs> so Christ, that, Martin. Yeah. What's yeah. this deal about masturbation? What happened yeah. to him? You know? I don't know. I don't what know. What happened? It's, Maybe he again, saw it's something as a kid. I, God knows. Yeah. Ugh. And and the thing is, it was before the germ theory where people realized that you know a lot of diseases are caused by germs. Mm. So people just kind of accepted that. So beginning in mm. like 1700 up through, you know, the end of the 1800s, this was kind of what people thought of masturbation caused all these horrible mm. diseases, like physical diseases. Mm-hmm. Um, wow. There was another book in 1759 written by a doctor, a French doctor named Samuel Tissot. And his was called the treatise on the diseases produced by onanism. And it basically covers the same information that uh, Martin covered, but they both kind of argued back and forth as to who was the quack and who wasn't the quack. <laughs> so, so but Tissot they, they, was always, they both yeah. they both argued the same thing, but one of them was a better better quack. Right, right. But they'd be like in each book, they'd be like, "Oh, well, there's somebody who disagreed with me about this, but you know, I know better than this guy does." Amazing. Um, yeah, and then so what Tissot said was, uh, he said that the the danger of masturbation was that it diminishes the seminal fluid, which is what we were talking about. Like you get rid of that vital fluid. And he says, physicians of every age have unanimously admitted that the loss of one ounce of semen enfeebles more than 40 ounces of blood. <laughs> Ever <laughs> so, unanimously? That's what you say. He says. God, thank God so he that didn't he, have a Facebook account, you know? I know, I know. But he still but did he a lot saying, of damage, Jesus. I mean, the idea that like semen would be more important than blood. Like even in the 1700s, you, you think that somebody would realize that hey, there's something wrong with that. You yeah, know, you could. Yeah. Um, so just to get back to why was it in the 1700s that people were suddenly writing all this stuff and believing that? Well, Lacour says that well, that was the time of the age of reason, and that was the time when uh, the Enlightenment and mm-hmm. what Enlightenment thinkers thought at that time was that reason should be used for the betterment of humanity. All your reason should be used to do something good. Mm. And, and unfortunately, in their opinion, uh, masturbation, because it was done alone and it used the mind for self-gratification, mm-hmm. it, it was didn't bad. didn't really produce anything that right. they could see. Uh-huh. Right. And, so they and would, another thing... Would they say the same to like, you know, playing with a yo-yo? That wouldn't be... Yeah. That would that Ulti- they'd be like, no, don't do that. Yeah, ultimately, to they were against using reason for imagination. They didn't like imagination. Uh, I see. I and see. so, what they thought was not only masturbation, where you use your imagination to fantasize mm-hmm. about something, mm-hmm. but it was the same argument that they used about the the literary form of the novel, the fictional oh. novel, which this is they were also me against. Of, uh, of 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 uh, Tipper Gore. 
you know, and, yeah. and her, uh, you know, uh, heavy metal. It was nothing. Therefore, it was evil. Right. Right. It was and, bad. And so, that yeah, that was like the same argument. And you kind of see the similarities because they thought, well, even in the novel, if you read a novel, you're usually reading it alone mm-hmm. and you're using your imagination, mm-hmm. you know, by yourself to create or kind of work up the passions from the, you know, the 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 theme or the the plot of the novel. So I wonder they what they would have thought of uh, Sudoku, you know, or yeah. uh, or R- R- Rubik's Cube. Yeah, I like, think uh-uh. we're, we're gaming now. Like even gaming, people that use gaming, like just gaming on their computers right now. Well, and um, yeah, they're looked down upon by by many by most non gamers. They think it's it's a yeah. waste of time, and and not me. I'm a gamer. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm all in. I'm like it's it's completely it's creative. Better, I think, yeah. It's better than this miserable existence. Yeah, and it's it's the new novel, I think. That like yeah, that it people is. Oh my god, there are narratives in video games that blow my mind because, you know, it's like these sandbox games yeah. like uh The Last of Us that uh yeah. show that was on HBO is based on a video game and the original video game. I remember the first time I played it, I was like, "Oh my god." It just yeah. changed the way I thought about story in general. Right, right. Amazing. Yeah. Um, just one last thing before we wrap up. They also, these were, they were against um, credit and paper money for the same reason. Like if you were an enlightenment, uh, an enlightenment ec- economist, they also argued that paper money and credit were also based on imagination. Like they didn't mm. exist in reality. So they were like and gold so, only, gold and barter. Right, right. So it was the same argument of like we're against we're against masturbation, <laughs> we're against the novel. That's amazing. And we're against credit and paper money because they're not they use the imagination and don't use reason. So boy. So John, I could go on talking oh, about this, masturbation. This Once again, you have blown my mind. You are a very (laughs) interesting person. And I don't know if our listeners know how hard you work on these. These are really amazing. I just want to acknowledge uh, that. I once you go down the path, you know, you you gotta one thing Take leads to the away. other, and then yeah. yeah. Well, you, for you, yes, and thank God you do that because this is really enlightening. I I don't know whether to masturbate or not after we finish <laughs> recording, but I well, think I'll I just, know what I'm gonna end up doing. I'll yeah, tell you that. I'm much. surprised you didn't. I, I'm surprised you lasted this long myself. <laughs> well, you know, uh, who knows what I'm doing underneath this desk? <laughs> so I will say. Uh, you know, in the 60s and 70s, it kind of came back around and people started saying in the right context. And you have to say in the right context, because mm. if you're at home by yourself, mm-hmm. you know, with a, a consenting partner yourself, mm-hmm. yes. uh, masturbation could be a positive thing, is what people in the like therapists started saying in the 60s and 70s. Yes. Uh, yes. And again, you have to say the right context because it's like out in your car at a park or something probably isn't the, the right no, context. No, it's not. A, people don't want to see that. Just like pooping. I don't want to see you pooping in your car. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, Vic Blue <laughs> in his book, Bang! Masturbation for People of All Genders and Abilities Ooh, says that, that masturbation... Sounds, yeah, yeah. That sounds like a great <laughs> book. <laughs> I read everything. I read everything uh, I could find uh, on what masturbation. What do you think? Do you recommend that one? Uh, this was a very simple book. And what's uh-huh. interesting about this one is it's for people of different physical disabilities. Oh, how so, to masturbate. Right. And also people of different genders or transgender. So it's a very interesting book that it's very accepting. And it's, it's kind of a how to. I found it to D- be an interesting book. A DIY sort of Kind of a how element. to. Hey, yeah. if you're having trouble, yeah. try figure three. Right. Uh-huh. Interesting. Right. It kind of talks you through it. Talks you through. Uh-huh. And uh, what Lou says is, uh, masturbation is a time and space you give yourself to be present with and inside your body. You deserve and are allowed to feel the highest level of physical pleasure, whatever that means to you at this moment. And so, mm. ultimately, after forty million years, <laughs> we're back to where we started, where which we was, were. Just do it because it feels good. Yeah. You know what I mean. So, so, yeah, God, we make things so difficult on ourselves, don't we? Yeah. 
Yeah. Jesus, all of the energy and the writing and the back and forth and the hair pulling and the oh, the yeah. hand wringing and all of this for what? Yeah. Just do yeah. what we did when we were monkeys. 40 million years. We We've make everything. For 40 million years. 40 yeah. million years. Well. All right, John. Well, soon, the, you know, that's one thing the robots won't have. They won't be able to <laughs> masturbate. No AI problem. can't pull that off. They probably Not yet. Can. You're right. It's Not learning, yet. though. They, it's they learning. will. They'll have some, some way to do it. <laughs> Do it more efficient. Like, <laughs> they'll all be it. sneakers. All sneakers. No <laughs> all of them, those sneakers. Uh, well, this was fantastic. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, this is human number two, John Lear, and, signing off. And this is human number one, John McCray. Thank you so much for joining us. If you enjoyed this podcast and found it interesting, please tell a friend about it. Uh and if if you go on Facebook, you'll also find that we have other information and, <laughs> and photographs that go along with the lectures. So please be sure to check us out there. And as always, uh, thank you everyone for joining us. We love you guys. Yeah. Thanks, John. Love you too. Love you, John. Talk to you soon.